people from Texas who love to sing. And then a sensation on the verge of international stardom when the unimaginable happened. The death that sent shockwaves throughout the country. Her biggest fan was arrested for murder. Tonight, you'll see rare video of the woman who gave voice to a musical movement and became an idol to millions. John Quinones asks, who was the extraordinary talent silenced too soon? A primetime investigation. It has the rapt attention of millions of Americans. A judge admitted into evidence a confession. In it, an obsessed fan, a middle-aged woman, told how she came to kill the glamorous young object of her fascination, a young girl called Selena. We decided to take a closer look at this story tonight because Selena was not just another rising young star. She lit up a whole road of hope and possibility for a generation. So John Quinones went back to his home, South Texas, to learn what was promised by Selena's life and what was extinguished with her death. They came from throughout the U.S. and Latin America, one of the biggest memorial services ever seen in the state of Texas, an estimated 50,000 people saying farewell to a vibrant voice from the barrios of Corpus Christi. Her name was Selena. She was nothing short of phenomenal, an electrifying blend of music and personality. Just 23 years old and already the winner of the prestigious Grammy Award and eight consecutive Entertainer of the Year awards in Texas. Selena was on the brink of international stardom. I don't know what to say anymore. But her success was all American. Her father, Abraham Quintanilla. This is what this is all about. It's the American dream. We are Americans that happen to be of Spanish descent, of, of Mexican descent. But we are Americans. We are born here. Selena was adored by millions of fans, so many that the singer named one of those admirers, Yolanda Saldivar, president of her fan club. For a while, the partnership worked. In fact, when Selena opened her own clothing boutique, Saldivar was hired to run it. But then last winter, the friendship began to sour over money. This is what the prosecution is charging. On the morning of March 31st, Selena came to this motel in Corpus Christi to confront Yolanda about thousands of dollars that were missing, money that fans had sent in to buy T-shirts, CDs, and autographed pictures, mementos they'd never received. At some point during their talk, Yolanda Saldivar pulled a gun and shot Selena in the back. She staggered through this courtyard to the front desk, where she collapsed. Witnesses say that in her last word, Selena uttered the room number where she was shot and named Yolanda as her assailant. Saldivar claims the shooting was accidental. When I went into, inside the emergency room, they told me that she had died. I was shocked. I don't remember anything after that for, for a few days, you know, I just, uh, I, I don't remember, my mind just went blank. What ended that day had begun more than 15 years before, when Selena was just a child. This is her first known recording, Selena singing a duet with her father. She was barely eight years old. It was taped by Johnny Herrera, a family friend. I told her father, listen, this kid has it. She doesn't go out of tune. She belts the song out. And sure enough, she made it big. But even back then, a very special relationship was developing between the singer-born Selena Quintanilla and the father who would become her manager. Daughters are always attached to daddy. You know, and, uh, but also, you know, in Selena, I saw a lot of me when I was young. 30 years ago, Abraham Quintanilla himself was a singer, and he poured his ambition into his little girl. He knew the Texas music circuit and many of its promoters, so in the early 80s, he formed a family band, 
with Selena as the lead singer, and he took them on the road, crisscrossing the state in the back of an old van. Finally, 10 years ago, their first big break, an appearance on the Johnny Canales show. Selena y los Dinos, take it away. A popular variety show syndicated on Spanish television. When I first met her on the first show, she said, if we do an interview, let's do it in English. English, please, because she, she couldn't speak Spanish at all. Selena literally grew up on the Canales show, eventually mastering not only the Spanish language, but also Tejano. It's a kind of music that mixes Mexican ballads with German polkas, the tunes of the early Texas settlers. Selena explained it all in this public service announcement. The German immigrants to Monterrey brought the accordion, polka, waltz, and other European dance styles, which became popular throughout Mexico and South Texas. Nowhere was Selena's music more popular than San Antonio, a city where more than half of the population is Hispanic. This is now known as the Nashville of Tejano music, but it wasn't always that way. I was born and raised here, and I remember when I was a teenager, Tejano was the music of the older generation, nothing young people would ever want to be associated with. But Selena came along and changed all that. She took the music a step further, creating a fusion between Tejano and black urban pop. In 1989, while performing at the Tejano Music Awards in San Antonio, Selena caught the attention of Jose Bejar, the president of EMI Latin Records. One of the primary goals that I had was to find the next Gloria Stefan. You know, an artist that would be not only bilingual, but bicultural. Gloria had opened the door, and the door was ajar, but I think Selena blew it wide open. She was just hip, she was cool. She was genuinely Hispanic, you know, Mexican roots at heart. In spite of the sexy costumes she wore on stage, she had a squeaky clean image. She didn't smoke or drink alcohol or do drugs. Her fans were people who often felt neither Mexican nor American. They were shut out of the mainstream in both countries. Selena was the first major star who truly represented this bicultural community. And she never forgot her roots. In fact, even at the height of her success, she still lived in a modest home right next door to her parents, in the same neighborhood where she grew up. Those values had everything to do with her mass appeal. I like to thank my family, my parents. I love you so much. She wanted to have a big family, but, uh, you know, we never got around to it. I mean, Chris Pettis was Selena's guitar player. He joined the band in 1989. They fell in love three years later got married she cared so much that she opened up she opened herself up so much that she'd get hurt and uh you know she's not here because of it she uh, was quoted as saying i trust too easily that's my problem and i end up getting hurt in the long run she didn't believe or she didn't think or want to believe or want to believe that people would could hurt her then she just didn't understand that, she didn't see that. And she'd never believed that her most trusted fan would take her life. After the shooting, Yolanda Saldiva locked herself in her pickup truck, holding a gun to her own head, threatening to commit suicide. She surrendered only after a nine and a half hour standoff with police. By then, Selena was dead. When do you find yourself thinking about her most? It's the first thought in your head when you wake up in the morning and it's the last one when you go to bed and it's what you dream about. Most parents would be enraged at the killer of their child. Are you? No. I, I hate the act that she'd done. I don't hate her. Yolanda, the killer, is never in, in my mind. Does a guilty or not guilty verdict matter to you? Well, at the end of the day, nothing's gonna bring my daughter back. The ultimate irony is that in death, Selena has achieved the greatest fame and finally realized her lifelong dream. 
She had just recorded Dreaming of You, her first release in English. I just The album has already sold almost two million copies, double platinum. Sales of her other albums have quadrupled since her death. I see Selena every day on the television, on the news, her music, every time I turn the radio on, it's, it's there. La gran estrella, amigos, the big star, always will shine with us, Selena. Orale, Selena, get it on. And take it away, Selena. And it's like she's alive, you know. Um, and and, and that's, that's the way I want to feel, like she's still alive, you know. And I feel it. <laughs> the way her fans feel. Tejano, the music she helped promote, is now hotter than ever. Throughout the Southwest, the youngest of girls want to be just like their idol. This is a Selena look-alike contest in Harlingen, Texas. If we ever had a role model that we needed at this point in time, she was the one. Today, there is no shortage of fresh, new Tejano talent. Like Jennifer Pena, also from Corpus Christi, and just 12 years old. Her manager, Selena's father. Who is your role model? Selena. A little girl from the barrio proves that dreams really can come true. And in 23 short years, she clears the way for so many others. There could be no greater legacy. And while Selena's music now dominates the Texas airwaves, as we said, the trial of your accused killer is what dominates the news. John Quinones joins us now from the Harris County Courthouse in Houston.